How's it going everyone? So today I want to talk about the best exercise for shoulder impingement. Before we begin the video though, please subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't already. I do appreciate the support. It helps my channel grow. Also, if you're interested in online personal training for me or finding some cool fitness products from Amazon, have a look in my description box. They're very cheap. So let's get started, you guys. Shoulder impingement syndrome is also called subacromial impingement. Now, this occurs when the tendons of the rotator cuff muscles become irritated or inflamed as they pass through the subacromian space. That's the passage beneath the acromion, and then that's why you get the pain. You also get weakness of movement, sore arm. You may get pins and needles as well. So the reason for all this basically is because there's a decreased space in the shoulder joint. Um, how is shoulder impingement caused? Like, how do you get it? It is caused by poor posture, generally repetitive, bad motions and exercise. So a, a great example, if you guys do barbell upright rows, you're, you have the weight in front of you and you're internally rotating your shoulder as you lift. You will completely degenerate your arm by doing this because the space in there is rubbing against the bone, the ball and socket, you will destroy your shoulder joint over time. And again, shoulder uh, impingement doesn't happen just like that it's over time you guys over time it gets worse and worse and worse until eventually you just wear out your shoulder joint so very important that you stop doing whatever is causing the pain look to see if you're doing any motions constantly during the day if you're sitting a lot during the day try to focus on getting that better so again exercise repetitive motion um poor posture and when i say exercise i mean not exercising you guys aren't exercising it's poor posture repetitive motion overhead activities of the shoulder uh repeated activities that are very bad can cause shoulder impingement um examples would be painting if you're constantly painting lifting stuff overhead that could be an issue um swimming because you're lifting over your head always tennis you're hitting the tennis ball and anything that's overhead generally with sports those people will get shoulder impingement so if you do not treat it properly what can happen is your rotator cuff can actually start to wear and thin out and that's when you get into really bad problems so we don't want that we want to know how can we fix that now what you want to do is you want to increase the space that's in the shoulder joint because that's why you're getting it right now it's because it's a decrease of space in that ball and uh that ball and joint socket there there's a decrease in space so we want to open that space up so you want to strengthen it too and uh, stretch it out by doing that you're going to stretch your back muscles and you're going to reduce the amount of overhead weight that you're doing or the overhead movements that you're doing so stop painting um, if you can if you can't then try to get a ladder so you're painting just with shoulder flexion at 90 degrees not 180 degrees of shoulder flexion this will really allow you guys to save your shoulders trust me on this um, so okay what are the exercises that we are going to do now the exercises are going to be very very simple it's actually not that hard to fix shoulder impingement if you guys do this correctly but again the exercise is only as important as if you stop doing what's causing the pain what I mean by this is you can do the exercises but the exercises just act as a band-aid if you keep cutting yourself it's gonna keep bleeding you're gonna have to keep putting the band-aid on you need to stop cutting yourself that's a bad analogy but whatever um, so stop doing what's causing the pain once you stop doing that you do the exercise it will completely get rid of the pain for good so what I recommend doing and I don't know where I placed my tennis ball, so I do apologize. I can make anything work though, I'm extremely handy. So I just have two pair of socks here, they're wrapped up. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to a wall. Doesn't matter what you're doing, uh, we'll use that wall for example. Um, it, again, it really doesn't matter, but <clears throat> any wall will work. I'm just gonna be using this pull. Now what I'm gonna do you guys, um, I can actually move this a little bit closer so I can show you guys. Now what you want to do is you want to put the, the tennis ball or whatever you're going to use. I have tennis balls, I have foam rollers in my description box, very cheap. You can buy them from Amazon to do these. I do not recommend the socks. I just, I lost my tennis ball. I can't find it. So you want to get the tennis ball, put it on your chest, put it, whatever, whatever pain is causing it, put it on your chest right here. So again, if it's the other arm causing the pain to do that, stick it here. Now you want to roll that around just like this. Another thing that you want to do 
is as you're rolling around, you want to do some frontal flexion, shoulder flexion, you guys, 90 degrees and also 180 degrees. Then you also want to do shoulder extension behind your arm. Then what you're going to do is shoulder abduction, shoulder adduction. You're then going to do shoulder adduction across the transverse plane, shoulder abduction across the transverse plane. These are all the shoulder joints, you guys, and then you're just gonna keep rubbing it around and just keep doing that. That is gonna get your shoulder pingement better. It's gonna get rid of all that wear and tear and it's gonna allow you to feel better, you guys. Using that tennis ball, I know it seems very weird to attack the chest if your shoulder is weird, but that's just how it works, you guys. That will alleviate the pain. So again, shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, shoulder abduction, adduction, shoulder abduction across the transverse plane, shoulder adduction across the transverse plane, you guys. Very simple, very easy, and just rotate that muscle in there, you guys. And uh, that's basically all you have to do. Some other things I will recommend, that's a great exercise. Um, oh, sorry, one more thing I forgot. I do apologize for this. You also wanna do internal rotation and external rotation as you have the tennis ball on your chest as you're rolling it around. So you can hold it steady too and do the exercise, but I recommend just moving it around just a little bit. And again, those are the four movements that your shoulder joint does. You wanna do all of them to really allow yourself to get rid of that shoulder impingement. So another thing that I will recommend doing, and I have recommended this in another one of my videos, but again, I have these resistance bands and you guys know me, I sell them on, I don't sell them per se, they're on Amazon, you guys can have a look at them. Now you're gonna wanna do pronated band pull-aparts. Now what this does, if you guys have awful posture, your shoulders will be caved in like this generally. I see 90% of people walking around with their shoulders like this. Doesn't necessarily have to be that bad, but it could even just be a little bit. You will sometimes see people with super exaggerated um, shoulders rolled in. So how do you fix that? What causes that? Generally, it's caused by doing too much pushing exercises or having very bad posture, sitting at a desk all day, your shoulders will round over. So what you wanna do is you wanna retract your scapula and you want your scapula to be sitting like this. Mine is like this because I have good posture. You guys, I train my back evenly with my chest. I do the exact same amount of vertical and horizontal horizontal pulling that I do for my vertical and my horizontal pushing movements, you guys. So you got to keep everything balanced, good posture, keep those shoulder blades retracted, good posture throughout the day. To do this movement, you get your resistance band. And again, I sell them on, I don't sell them per se, they're just on Amazon. You guys can have a look in my description box. Now what you want to do is pronate your shoulders and now get the resistance bands. And all you're going to do is pull them apart. As simple as that. Here's the mistake that people make when they're doing this. They have neutral shoulder position. You do not want neutral shoulder position because if you have neutral shoulder position and you do this movement and you pull it back, guess what's working right now? Your rhomboids. Nothing to do with your rear delts at all. We want to attack the rear delts, you guys. Or we, we want to attack the rear delts. We don't want to attack the rhomboids. Um, so really pronate your shoulders and pull. That's going to allow to really hit your rear delts. The reason why I say this, yes, it is important to hit your rhomboids, but you want to hit your rhomboids and your rear delts. You just don't want to hit your rhomboids. So what you can do actually is you can pronate your shoulders, do some like this, do some band pull aparts with pronated shoulders, then do some in neutral position to hit your rhomboids. And then you can even retract your scalpula as well and do some more like this. Well, that will hit your teres major, teres minors a little bit harder as well. So all different kinds of things you can do with the band pull-aparts. The main thing though is high repetitions. 30 to 50 repetitions, none of this 10, 15, 20 repetitions at all. High volume, very lightweight, I'm only using two pounds. End of video, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like the video, share it, follow me on Instagram, dylanberg999. Thank you.